welcome to Amit's Math School. In this video, we are going to learn about square number properties and the square number finding that is also called perfect square number. Let's start our today's video. Here we see the integer from 1 to 82. Among this number, some numbers are perfect square number. Let's see which number are perfect. These red marked numbers are perfect square. That is 1. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, and 81. These perfect square numbers are the square of some integer number. Let's see some properties of perfect square number. At first, let's see considering the last digit classification. That is, if we classify the square number, we we'll get 6 class considering the last digit. That is, 1 square is equal to 1. In this case, the last digit is 1. 2 square is equal to 4. The last digit is 4. 3 square is equal to 9. The last digit is 9. 4 square is equal to 16. Here, the last digit is 6. And 5 square is equal to 25. 5 square is equal to 25. The last digit is 5. 6 square is equal to again 36. In this case, the last digit is 6. 7 square is equal to 49. The last digit is 9. 10 square which is 100, the last digit in this case is 0. If we take the square up to 20, all the square number will be classified among the 6 class. That is, the end with 0, end with 1, end with 4, end with 5, and the end with 6, or end with 9. That is, if we consider the perfect square number, all the numbers are classified into six group or six class that is considering the last digit this six class that is that is the perfect square number end with zero one four five six or nine that is the property one all the perfect square number must be end with either zero one four five six or nine three e odd number and three even number if we consider zero as the even number that is the perfect square Number is end with 0, 4, 6, or 1, 5, 9. Or we can say the perfect square number will never end with 2, 3, 7, or 8. If any number is end with 2, 3, 7, or 8, that number must not be a perfect square number. Now let's see the second property. When any perfect square number is end with 6. The second last digit will be odd number, that is 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. Here you see in this class, when the perfect square is end with 6, the second last digit, this one, either 1, 3, 5, 9, or we can get 7. That is, when any perfect square number is end with 6, in that case, the second last digit will be an odd number that is either 1 or 3 or 5 or 7 or 9. Now let's see the third property that is when the any perfect square number is end with 5 that case the second last digit will be 2. Here you see 25, 2 to 5 that is when any perfect square number is end with 5 then the second last digit must be 2. Here the example 25 is a perfect square number in this case the number is end with 5, then the second last digit here is 2. Let's go to the next property. That is, when end with 0, the second last digit will be 0. And also, that we get every case the even number of 0. That is 2, or either 4, or 6, that is even number of 0. So here, this number, that is 100, 400, the end with 0. And second last digit, in this case, must be 0. That is, here we get even number of g. When any perfect square number is end with 0, then the second last digit will be 0. And if more than 2 zero, in that case we get 4, 6, 8, that is even number of g. Next property, that is, when end with 1, 4, or 9, in that case the second last digit will be even number, including 0. That is, if the number is end with 1, or 4 or 9, in that case, 
the second last digit will be an even number. You see here, the red marked digit are the second last digit. In the case when the perfect square number is end with 1, 4, and 9. And in every case, we can easily see the number are even number in the second last. So, this is the property number 5. That is when any perfect square number is end with 1, 4, or 9. In that case, the second last digit will be an even number, including 0. The next property is when we divide any perfect square number by 8, in case of even number, the remainder will be 0 or 4, and in case of odd number, the remainder will be 1. Here, the 64, let's take 64. This one is the even perfect square number. If we divide this 64 by 8, we will get the remainder 0. And let's take another number, that is 196. If we divide this 196 by 8, in that case, the remainder will be 4. That is, if we divide any perfect square number, which are even, that is, the end with 4, 6, or 0, in that case, the remainder will be either 0 or 4. And when we divide any odd perfect square number, that is, which are end with 1, 9, or 5, in that case, every time, the remainder will be 1. Here, if we divide this 49 by 8, in that case, the remainder will be 1. Now, very important property of perfect square number, that is, property number 6. The sum of the digit till the single digit will be either 1, 4, 7, or 9, which is called the digital root. Suppose we take 361, so the digital sum of 361, that is 3 plus 6 plus 1, which is 10. Here we get two digits. If we sum again, there is 1 plus 0, which is equal to 1. That is the sum of the digits till the signal digit. That is, we get here 1, which is called the digital root. So, the digital root of 361, which is 1. So, the sum of the digit for any perfect square number is either 1, 4, 7, or 9. So, this one is a very important property. Let's see another number. That is 3, 2, 4. That is 3 plus 2 plus 4, which is equal to 9. So, in this case, 3 to 4 is the perfect square number, and the sum of the digits till a single digit is 9. Let's see another number, 2, 5, 6. Sum of the digits is 13, 1 plus 3 equal to 4. So, this one is also is 4. So, this is very important property of perfect square number. That is, sum of the digits till the single digit will be either 1 or 4 or 7 or 9. Using these properties, we can find the perfect square number. For finding any perfect square number, we just take this property. When we take any perfect square number, the step one will be the last digit checked. First, we check the last. That is, the number must be end with 0, 1, 4, 5, 6, or 9. Or we can say never end with 2, 3, 7, or 8. This one will be step number one. Then the step number two, that is digital root check. In here, we just take the sum of the digit till the single digit that will be one, four, seven, or nine. That is, if we take the digital root of any perfect square number, and that will be end with one, four, seven, or nine. Then the step number three, which is second last digit check. In this case, when any perfect square number is end with six, the second last digit will be odd number, that is 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. When end with 5, then the second last digit will be 2. And when the end with 1, 4, 9, in that case, the second last digit will be an even number. Also, when the number is end with 0, in that case, the second last digit will be 0. Step number 4, the divisibility by 8. That is, we just check the divisibility by 8. When the perfect square number is divided by 8, in case of an even perfect square number, the remainder will be 0 or 4, and in case of odd perfect square number, the remainder will be 1. So we have this 4 tape to check in whether any number is perfect square or not. Let's see, using this 4 step, how can we check any number is perfect square or not? So first question, which of the following is not a perfect square number. So first, 
let's take 9764. Here, the number is end with 4. So, this may be a perfect square number because we know perfect square number is end with 4. Now, the digital sum of this number, that is 9 plus 7 plus 6 plus 4, which is 26, that is 2 plus 6, which is 8. Here, the digital sum of this number is 8. So, according to the properties, the digital sum must be 1, 4, 7, or 9. So, here we get 8, so we can say this one is not a perfect square number. Now, let's take another number, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, we know when any number is end with 5, this may be a perfect square number. If we take the digital sum, here we get 50, and 1 plus 5, which is 6. So, the digital root, that is the sum of the digit, is here 6. So, we know the sum of the digit must be 1, 4, 7, or 9. Here we get 6. So, we can say this one is also not a perfect square number. Let's see another number. 1, 2, 3, 0, 0. And the digital sum is also here 6. So, we can say this one is not a perfect square number. Let's see 6, double 5, 2, 5. Here, the number is end with 5. So, this one may be a perfect square number. And the digital sum is here 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. Here also, this one is not a perfect square number because the sum of the digit, that is the digital root, is here 5. The digital root must be 1, 4, 7, or 9. Let's see some other number, that is 9, 7, 5, 4. So, first, the number is end with 4, so no problem. And the digital root here, that is 7. So, so, step 2 is also satisfied, that is 5. Step 1, the end with 4, that is satisfied. The digital root is here 7, that is the sum of the digit here, which is 7. So, this one is also passed. Now, step number 3, when any number is end with 4, then the second last digit must be even number. So, here, the number is end with 4, and the, when any perfect square number is end with 4, then the second last digit here, this one will be an even number. But we got here 5. So this one is not a perfect square number. Now let's see 1, 2, 3, 2, 1. First, the number is end with 1, no problem. Then the digital sum is here 9, that is no problem. If any perfect square number is end with 1, in that case, the second last digit will be even number. Here 2 is even, so that is also satisfied. And the lastly, divisibility by 8. If we divide this number by 8, in that case, the remainder will be 1. So we can say all four steps have satisfied this number. So this number is a perfect square number. Next, 1, 3, 4, 5, 6. So last digit is 6, no problem. And the digital roots is here 1. So that is also no problem. And when any perfect square number is end with 6, in that case, the second last digit will be an odd number. So here, 5 is an odd number. So that property is also satisfied by like this number. And when we divide this number, this one is even number. So if we divide this even perfect square number by 8, in that case, the remainder will be either 0 or 4. In this case, we will get the remainder 0. So that property, that is, that step is also satisfied by this number. So this number is a perfect square number. Finally, the number 65536. The number is end with 6 and the digital sum is 7. Both the step is passed. When any number end with 6, the second last digit will be or the 3 is or. So that step is also satisfied. And finally, when we divide any even perfect square number by 8, in that case the remainder will be either 0 or 4. In this case, we will get the remainder 0. So that property is also satisfied. So we can say this number is a perfect square number. That is, be aware about that. We passed all four steps by any number, but still that number is not a perfect square number. That is, we can say perfect square numbers must satisfy all four steps. But any number satisfying all four steps not mean that number must be a perfect square number. 